Flooding is a global challenge with the causes attributed to climate change, lapses in planning, the attitude of the people, enforcement of laws, and the poor engineering of communities. It is a predictable annual event in Ghana with the worst happening on June 3, 2015, which led to the death of about 150 people. The economic impact of these floods on the country is estimated to run in millions of dollars. Lives and property are always lost in the event of floods. What can we do about this situation? This episode of Trash Talk will interrogate these issues associated with the perennial flooding problem in Ghana and through a collaborative approach propose solutions that will be sustainable. Let's go for a quick break and when we get back, I will introduce you to my panel. Welcome back to Trust Talk. Today we are talking about flooding in Ghana, a very topical subject to be addressing at this uh, time like this um, in the year. I have with me experts from different fields to address the issue of flooding in Ghana. I will start with the, from my immediate left, Mr. George AEC from NADMO. Yes, you're welcome, sir. And then I'll move to Senna Adiepena. From, from Dredge Masters, I, yes, from Thank Dredge you. Masters. Yes. And I would go on to Mr. Seth, in, sorry, Engineer Seth Kujoji, um, formerly of Hydrological Services. You're yeah, welcome, gentlemen. Later on in the program, we'll be joined by Planner Mohammed, Mohammed Damba, who will join us via Zoom. I want to, before we get into the details of the flooding issue, I want to start from Senna. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about what Dredge Masters does. Okay, thank you for having me on your show. Dredge Masters is currently the biggest indigenous dredging company in Ghana, offering dredging services across the country and even within the West African sub-region. So basically, we, for those who don't understand dredging, it's basically taking out material from underneath water, a water body. So it's a, a maritime activity, it's a marine-based activity. We also uh, undertake uh, sea defense projects and uh, other maritime consultancy and engineering services re related to the marine industry. I, I suppose dredging. your activities are all coastal related? Coastal and then drainage and the water bodies, more specifically the water bodies, right. because uh, we have the port infrastructure, we have the dams, we have rivers, we have lakes, lagoons, which need to be dredged or maintained to its design to ensure that they function as designed. Yes, I'll move on to Mr. Sorry, Engineer Seth Kujoji. Can I call you Seth? Yeah, Engineer sure. Seth. Yeah. <laughs> Engineer Seth, tell us what hydrological services does. Well, hydrological services is the state institution clothed with the mandate to plan, design, uh, water engineering structures, uh, that's to say uh, flood management structures, okay. sewerage, it also carries out uh, sewerage engineering, and then uh, coastal sea defense engineering, that's coastal okay. engineering and also hydrographic activities. That's monitoring water bodies, collecting data on these water bodies for industrial use. So oh. that is the mandate of the Hydrological Services Department. And Hydrological Services Department is a government consultant. That's the government consultant on these issues, on these areas. So that's what it does. Are we to assume, for instance, that if we are going to have high tides, you would be able to predict, Hydrological Services should be able to predict and its effect on um, on, our, on our coastal um, livelihoods and all of that? Well, the uh, sea, sea levels are being monitored in the country at various mm. points. So by, by who? By yourself? Yeah, by hydrological services? Hydrological services and then even the ports. And the ports? The ports. You okay. see, Tama port, Takuradi port, mm -hmm. they, they have instruments which monitor the, the sea levels. Okay. Okay, I'll move on to Mr. George AEC of 
NADMO. Please tell us about the mandate of NADMO. Yeah, thank you. Uh, NADMO is taxed with the responsibility of managing disasters and its uh, similar activities uh, related to disaster management and then to develop the capacity of communities to respond positively uh, to disaster issues. And so that's basically what we are taxed uh, to do. And, and NADMO was set up uh, by Acts 517 of 1996 and it's been reviewed to Act 927 of 2016. And so now we are operating under Act 927, uh, which gives us the mandate uh, to carry out our activities uh, across the country. Interesting. So I suppose this period of the year is your hottest. Yeah, yes, and not more is uh, to add is a coordinating agency in the disaster management arena. Okay. What it means is that we don't work alone. Uh, we work in partnership with other organizations like his organization, oh. like his, the assemblies, uh, the Ghana Armed Forces, the Ghana Police Service, National Ambulance Service, uh, National Security, uh, Signals Bureau, uh, and the Ghana Army. Okay, sometimes you need 48 to come in to lift heavy boulders in case of collapse of building. Sometimes you need Air Force with helicopters and co to move. So we work in partnership with all these uh, agencies. Yes, uh, this time is the uh, busiest uh, moment for uh, anybody working at NADMO uh, because of flood issues. Uh, but we are not only involved in flood management. We are involved in even fire. But the good news there is that there's a state agency that is directly responsible for fire incidents, and so National Fire Service. But we, we, we assist them when uh, it happens that way. And then we are involved in other hazardous material, hazmats. Fire Service, again, is, is the special agency uh, for that. And then we, we earthquake disaster and all that. So NADMO is involved in all kind of disaster management activities. You have a broad mandate. Yes. And so I'm assuming that you are the anchor for this whole collaborative effort by government. Yeah. Okay. Now we move to the substantive issue. As I yeah. mentioned, we may have um, planner Mohammed joining us, uh, Mohammed Damba, sure. joining us from Institution of Planners along the way because planning is a key function to the discussion of um, flooding in Ghana. I want to start off with quite a pedestrian question. Are we to say that the flooding that we see around the world, and particularly in Ghana, is man-made, or it's an occurrence of nature. I'll start with Senna again. Okay, thank you. So, uh, yes, uh, there's been flooding, not just in Ghana, as you rightly said, worldwide. There's been flooding incidents all over. And uh, most of the time, they're attributing it to the climate change, increasing water levels and uh, high rainfall patterns, tidal changes, I mean, storms and all of that. And um, those, some might call the act of God or act of nature. Uh, yes, so that happens not too often, but it does happen. Those That's around the world. Around the world. Yeah. And even as we have in Ghana here, some levels, rainfall levels are quite high that, uh, yes, um, Ideally, the drains we have in place might be a bit below capacity to contain them. So that uh, on the other side, where the man factor, where humans are expected to try to mitigate and control that, comes into play here. Because uh, during the design in engineering of drainage systems, first we have the natural drainage systems, which are the rivers and lagoons, where you have runoffs go into them, and then the same land space we have absorbs some of the water. But as you have it, this development ongoing, there is engineering because of these development structures that also allow for runoff. Because the more the structures come up, the, the concrete work doesn't allow for percolation of water into the ground. So you have increase in runoff, and yeah. that's the reason why it's, it's, it's part of the factors, these drainages are, uh, I mean, during the design, during the design, yeah. yes. So we look at the rainfall pattern within the area, we look at the topography, look at the, the uh, yeah, 
the community, Can the I population. Can I switch yeah. quickly okay. to Mr. Ayisi? Um, are we, can we say that the Ghana situation is predominantly man-made? Of the Ghana situation with flooding is predominantly man-made? Predominantly, yes, we can say that. What but, are the factors but, but then? But there's a combination of uh, the force majeures and then the man-made. Man-made, I think, engineer touched on some uh, uh, issues, the drainage system. I'm happy today I'm on the set with the hydrological <laughs> service It's going person. to be a hot, a hot yeah, Most times they put, they put <laughs> their questions to me, so I'm excited he's here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, the factors, as he indicated, the built areas, and then we are claiming places that ordinarily would have been a water collection points. We call the Ramsey sites and, and those uh, other places that we are filling and building in. So, those <laughs> water will need to find their way. And when they do, we know the consequences. So, our actions uh, uh, are partly the reason. And, and our non-responsiveness in, in, in dealing with the issues, construction of storm drains and others. I've said it elsewhere, and, and it's, it's something that is on record, that uh, in Japan, 30 years ago, uh, they had, or even more, they had challenges with uh, flooding in Tokyo. Uh, they decided to deal with it, and they dealt with it. How? With, with the construction of a major resilient uh, storm drain, underground mm. storm drain, that took away about 90% of the flood problems in Tokyo. Okay? And in wow. in United Kingdom, it, it was, the Thames was giving problems. It's in the middle of London. Yes. And, and, you know, uh, a prime minister challenged the engineers. They rose up to the occasion. We are not saying it doesn't flood, but it's not as it used to be. That, so the technology is available today that if we commit resources to solving it, we can do it. Let's take a clear example. In, in, in 2007, when President Kufo decided to do these uh, Alajo problems, the hydrological people and the other engineers tackled, we had this storm drain, and it reduced or virtually abated the issue until recently that Alajo and Co are beginning to experience. Unfortunately, Dreadmasters, they are there, you know, working around the clock. But I don't know if you are still there. But should we the problem for Dreadmasters to come oh, no, in? No, no, no. What, the state what, has what, to what it means is that the state must commit. I had the Minister for yes. Works and Housing say we will need about five billion. He's yes. here. Maybe mm -hmm. he will be able to corroborate that or not. Five billion to tackle. And, and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Japan did it then, two billion dollars. Then, 30, 40 years ago, so if we are committed to it, we need to find the resources. And that is where GARID comes in, Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development uh, Program, $200 million US, US dollar project. And, and I believe uh, Dread Masters and Hydro uh, <laughs> will, be, will play integral part <laughs> in this thing. I want you to... We need to see it. We, we must. It, it I must like the, the scenario created with the yeah. Japan yes. um, case. Yeah. And if we brought that kind of um, dramatic change, which we require for the change we want to see, then we must call on the planners because now we have... And them, we have, and them. I'm coming to them. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have this situation where we have people building in places that we do not need to be professionals to know that this is, this is wrong. And... Planning falls under the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation. Is, states, is the state's responsibility. Then does that mean that the state is shaking its responsibility in one way for another state agency to take it up and create perpetual business for private sector on with the hydrological services looking on? Because as everybody is pointing out now, sir, Engineer Seth, where have we failed with our drain system, our drainage system in Ghana? Well, uh, we wouldn't say we have failed. Okay. Yeah, because there's hope to succeed. <laughs> okay. So we, we will say that we have failed only when um, maybe all hope is lost and uh, we cannot generate any ideas to solve But that looking problem. at the current situation with lives lost, property destroyed annually, annually, Yes. How have we fared? This is at the doorstep of engineers. Yes. I always say that the kind of drainage problem that we have in Ghana, especially in Accra, it's not an engineering problem. It's a social problem. 
But you know, uh, to add to it, I know yes. you mentioned Accra, but Kumasi is also flooding badly exactly. now. Exactly, it's a social problem. Okay. It is not an engineering problem. Tell us, should yes. we be having the gutters? I will use my ordinary man's um, language. The gutters, should they be open, open design gutters? Where are bad behavior, if we are badly behaved, we are dumping things in there. If they were covered, where would all of these, um, the debris, where would the debris gather? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true, but you cannot cover all the drains. Some are so big, so huge, that you cannot cover all the drains. You know, the big ones, the primary drains, the big storm drains, you cannot cover them. Where you cover them, you create more problems. We have uh, situations- How come, how come? Yeah, the, we have situations, we, we have situations where we cover some of the drains only to realize that they became so choked that they could not be desalted. So we had to go and use machines to break the concrete cover on these drains to be able to have access to be able to desalt them. And so it's all coming from our attitude. That's why I said that the problem we have is a social problem. It's attitude now. You see, uh, people have the notions that if we construct concrete line drains, that means that we are solving the problem. That is not. It's part of the solution. But the solution is that drains have corridors for water to flow. And so nobody is expected to build in these corridors. You see, the corridors are supposed to be left clear, and so which we call buffers. You see, these drainage buffers, they are supposed to be left clear. They have, you know, we, we have reasons where we have the buffers. You know, when what you are have- What are the buffers? Let's, uh, the, audience there are reservations. Be... When you have, let's say you take the outdoor drain. Yes. You know, as we have the line section now, around circle is about 35 meters wide. Okay, you, uh -huh. you mean the borders, how wide? Yeah, the, the borders, yes. Okay. Yes, the reservations along the drains on See, either side. I want side. you to use the language which is for the pedestrian. Okay. People, for all of us, not engineers, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I want us to appreciate the, the, the magnitude of the problem. So if, I know it will be difficult, but try and break it down some more for us. So you mean the borders of the, of the gutter? Of the, the gutter, gutter. Okay. on either side, left either side. and right there's supposed to be land space okay. on either side not to be developed okay so when you have such a land space what happens is that when nobody can predict the weather or the storm when you have excessive storm which overwhelms the drainage corridor the drain then the overflow is captured or is restricted within the corridor and so nobody uh, no property gets flooded but when you have people encroaching inside the corridor, that's where the problem is. Once the corridor is encroached, then you don't even have the land space to expand if you want to expand, if there's a need to expand the channel. So you don't have the land space to expand. And so that is not a, a, an engineering problem. It's a social problem. People dumping refuse into the drains and choking them, it's a social problem. The, the, the example that my brother cited in Japan, that one was an engineering problem okay. because the, the palmos of the area is below sea level. Okay. So the sea was flooding, you know, the, 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 the city. And so they had to come with, you know, ideas to solve the problem. That's when they had to design this huge underground uh, drainage system, five kilometers long, so that all the rivers uh, within the city flow into that channel. You see, and then, the, and then the, fl the, the, the flow is evacuated from the city. That is an engineering problem. But, but let me, let me budge in a little bit, still on the same thought. You see, as Dredge Masters was talking about, uh, was talking um, earlier, yeah. um, Senna, when Senna was talking on behalf of Dredge Masters, you see, I've seen the remnants of Dredge Masters' work, and it's not all plastics and garbage. Yeah. We have a lot of silt, a lot of sand, and you can't tell us that people are deliberately moving from their households to go and dump some sand in these areas. That must be part of the architecture of the land plus the design, the engineering design, which is allowing um, sand to get in. Because a lot of the problems we may even see, you may have the debris being just very limited. But, and that we will attribute to the human bad behavior of the human factor. But the sand, that gathers so much that we must employ a, a, a private company to actually keep digging up. If I, that's, I just want to use yes. layman's language, yeah. digging up so much. The engineering doesn't cater for sand that would also choke 
Can uh, I that is, can yes, I sir. It's that? yes. directed at That's why we're talking about during the corridor. We have mm. just mentioned yes. the border. Mm. If you have border on either side, nobody is supposed to develop there. You know where the sun is coming from? The sun is coming from our development sites. People go and build, they just dump site there, it rains and the sun is washed into the, the, into the, uh, the, the immediate drainage system and then it comes to the next one and then to the next one and then down to Accra. That's where the sun is coming from. It's coming from the areas where development is taking place, unrestricted. Nobody is restricting anybody. You can develop, you can do anything within the basin and then go away with it. You, you agree with me, when people are building, Re doing redevelopment even in the city of Accra. Why do they first dump the sand? They dump it inside the gutter, the mm -hmm. drain, mm -hmm. the roadside drain. They put it just inside it, you know, so that they can use it to do their development. And when it rains, the sun goes into the Odor River. This is where the sun is coming from. The sun is not being generated by the river. No, it is coming, it is because people are settling within the drainage corridor and then disturbing the soil. When the drainage corridor, the, the borders, as you call it, the borders are left clear. Then you have vegetation, you have trees, you have grass growing to check erosion. But when they are stripped off, when the corridors are stripped of vegetation, then you see that when torrent, uh, torrential rain comes, then the soil is washed into the drain. That is what is happening. That we is have, where the sun is coming from. We have issues. I mean, it looks like everything is pointing to the inability of us as a country then to plan. Um, I, we have online um, planner, uh, Mohamed Damba. Hello, Mohamed. Institution of Planners. Hello, Mohamed. Yes. Hello, Senior Planner. You're welcome to Trash Hello, Talk. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome to Trash Talk. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. I'm yes. doing well. Um, we, we've been talking from the different angles. We've had the take from NADMO, we've had the take from Hydrological Services, and of course, Dredge Masters. But it seems, there seems to be a trend with the conversation that we have a big problem with planning in this country. And that has contributed in a major way to the flood problem that we have. Um, could you say that the, the flooding that we have has a lot to do, maybe about 70%, has a, is, is a problem with planning? Thank you very much. Uh, it's difficult to attribute any of these factors uh, in the most scientific manner for now, because uh, I do admit that uh, the way planning is done can be part of it, uh, except to add that the processes uh, are as follows, that people acquire land and then they build. By law, they are supposed to not cover more than 50% of the land surface with permeable materials. So when they do, then there is less or no opportunity for percolation for, for the water to sip underground. So that the volumes that run, uh, which we call run off into the drains, reduce. And when we have less volumes into the drains, uh, we possibly would have less flooding situations. So this is one thing. And uh, let me be quick to add that the entire country is subdivided into smaller units known as the district assemblies so that we can uh, be more efficient in governing our spaces. And that is why the mandate to issue permits for development is given to these bodies. Um, but will you say with oversight, the with oversight from the agency planning? To issuance of permit currently is not efficient enough. And so people find themselves, it's not, we have departments. So if you go to the municipal law, uh, 
district assembly, you have various departments. So we have the works department pretty much focusing on the engineering aspect of things. And then we have the physical planning department being in charge of um, um, leading the processes of preparing uh, land use plans and overseeing how development happens in accordance with certain designated uses. So this is where the problem is. Uh, it's not correct to say that we do not have plans, uh, but it's correct to say that we do not have enough of them. And it okay. is also correct to say that these plans are not updated as frequently as they should be. How often the should they be updated? In, a, in every five years. And, and what has been the problem? Is it the fact that government does not allocate enough for you to undertake this key function? That is part of it. Uh, we have a lot of factors at each level. At, with each cluster of these courses of floods, I think we can disaggregate them further. Yes. Uh, in a typical local assembly, we have issues of logistics, I think we are having problems. Issues of uh, competence sometimes. It does not. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. The line is a little bad, but um, we can hear you a little bit. Otherwise, if you don't mind, can you call back in? Can you call back into okay. the program? All right. Yes. So we have. Yes, yes, all right. Okay, all right. Um, I want to get back to the in-studio panelists and how well are we all working together? I know when the regional minister went on this exciting um, agenda of making Accra clean and frontage issues and all of that, um, there were a few resistance from different quarters. But I, I, I'm looking at it in uh, a holistic manner. How are we to do? I mean, look, we, we see buildings being put up, and I hear that people are able to go there with their own red paint to write stop work by a particular date. And this is not the planning, um, official government institution responsible for planning. Do they have the capacity to actually stop people from building in areas that they do not have to build? Said so that every year you are going to have to sort of break some houses down with the backlash that it comes with and all of that. Where are we, are we apportioning as part of the mitigating factors our activities for NADMO? During the year, before we get to the rainy season like this, are we on a path to sort of break out of the waterways, buildings that may cause you know, further damage to other people's properties and their lives? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's not to be apportioning blames, but yes. all institutions have their responsibilities or their mandates uh, to work with. And the planners at the assembly, he, he alluded to the fact that yes. they have planners at the assemblies, and they give permits for people to site projects yes. at certain places. Uh, and so uh, it is... Uh, it cannot be the case that when somebody is putting up a building within a district, which district has a planner, okay, and, and you know, nobody questions the person. Are Maybe because of Yeah, that one, he's here, he will speak to it. <laughs> Maybe because uh, uh, the people use those cunning way of yeah. stop work and no people think, oh, the, the planner may see and think the assembly has taken uh, action, but he's also there. And then we think it will be now only to realize in the middle of the night, the building has yes. sprung up and yep. it's, it's completed. And so uh, we need to look at it from, from that uh, perspective, people having their responsibilities. Again, at NADMO, uh, we don't have the mandate to uh, break down such structures once the assemblies have given So the are you then to assume that you just sit and wait till no, the problem comes no, and you act? No, no. We, we, we are part of the assembly. And so our officers go around to look for some of you. When we see them, then we report our report to the assembly. You know, the DCE okay. is the Disaster Management Committee chairman of the district. Wonderful. Okay? And the regional minister, same at the regional level. And so when you send the report, then the DCE is clothed with the powers to call the planner to find out why such 
structures are going on at certain places that, you know, if you go to the districts, you know, they've been so mapped out that if you buy, if you buy a land in any district, and you go there, they, can, they will tell you in the next 10 years, they plan to put up a school in this area. And it's been mapped out. Okay? And so they know that this place is a Ramsey site. They know this course is a water channel. Okay? And so if you put up any structure there, it's going to obstruct the flow of uh, water. And then the consequential effect is that people in the area are going to get flooded. We have cases where uh, there's not been flooding at in that, a particular place for many years. Kwesi Mensa puts up his building and the whole place, <laughs> you get fun. it, and you begin to get calls and calls. So uh, we work in partnership with them. Now we've been given the mandate that doctor, assuming if you bought a land and you were going to put up a structure, you need to have a disaster clearance certificate before you can begin. We need to test whether the soil is good for the kind of structure you want to put up. And when you finish, whether it's habitable, okay, we need to do all those things. But until we get the LI, legislative instrument, we cannot implement this. How close are we to getting it? Uh, I can't say that because since I took, uh, I got into these office, I've been speaking How about this. Uh, <laughs> from 2018. I've My been goodness. speaking uh, about this authority and the ally and and i know there's a technical and legal committee that is working on it so we just pray that uh, it comes out so that we can have the mandate to support the assembly uh, to do but now the assemblies have the power okay they have the power and so if you put up that's what the regional minister directed that they did what they, we they, they were to, to do we and the to. president is also retreated what the regional minister said the one now is we need to carry it out on the, the last on one before you can carry it out, there's a law which says if if engineer said mm -hmm. looks on for me to Put go and yeah. habit a place for about 10, 12 years, yes. and he doesn't say anything. Yes. He knows I'm not supposed to be there. When he wants to evict me, the land is for him, and he, he allowed me to be there. He must go to court to get the wow. clear order to get me out. On the note of <laughs> on that note of legality, yes. we will get back to it because it's exciting. Meaning that are we until we get a proper ally for this, are we going to sit for people to continue to build and then in another no, five years of the power. in another five yeah. years we will come back and then say, well, you, you built in a waterway. We'll be back. There, it's getting exciting. We'll be right back after the break to continue. Welcome back to Trash Talk. If you missed earlier discussions, you really did miss a lot. But we are going to conclude the program, this session, with some parting words from Hydrological Services. We also have Dredge Masters and we have NADMO. I want you to tell us, your, give us your take on the flooding situation and conclude with what your role has been or your role is going to be in helping solve the flood problem in Ghana. I will start off with Senna. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, basically, this flooding thing has been a big issue. Yes. I mean, and uh, we as contractors and uh, solution providers, by way of ensuring that we maintain these channels, these drainage systems, be it uh, engineered or natural formed channels, we currently are very well equipped, well resourced, and uh, we are in the position to ensure that these drainage systems, which are to allow for ease of flow of runoffs and during high rainfalls, are able to allow for that. But as uh, my colleague senior engineer mentioned, these social issues play a very daunting, I mean, they, 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 they disturb the whole process. Mm. First of all, these encroachments within these buffer areas, which are first to allow for, you know, maintenance also, when you have to 
maintain these channels. These, we, we require the equipment to have access to these drainage systems. In addition to the fact that once there's flooding, in the extreme case, these areas also contain the flood. So that uh, we need, as a people, to ensure that we stay away from these areas as much as possible. We know the capital is booming with business. Everyone wants to rush into the space, but it should be done properly. Yeah. The institution responsible for control monitoring, actually. Monitoring is key. Once people start, it doesn't happen overnight. So that they come in immediately and ensure that these areas are kept free. Then these smaller drainages, which connect to this major storm drainage. Yes, we are, as part of our mandate in maintaining this drain, we also construct some of these drainages so that uh, it's not just enough to construct it and have it work effectively. Junior then, Sena, I, can I let you, you, you recently launched a, an equipment, the president yes. launched an equipment. Can you tell us a bit about that to conclude? Okay. What's the function of that? What was that excitement all about? Could you tell us something a bit more about it? <laughs> yes, thank you. So uh, you, yes. as we're growing, as dredge mass is growing in the dredging industry, mm -hmm. dredging space, we've added on to our fleet uh, state-of-the-art dredging equipment. These dredges we brought in, they are two beaver cutter suction dredges and then two support work boats. Okay. These dredges are basically intended to dredge deeper waters. So they have a reach of up to 16 meters. What we previously were working with were for depth up to six meters, which are for shallow water dredging. So these go for dams, you know, for every retention as a measure, means of controlling flooding. We can create retention ponds and uh, develop the infrastructure in the country. Thank you very Thank much, you. Inge Engineer Sena. I'll move on to Engineer Seth Kujoji. Yes, today you've educated us a lot. Could you give us your parting words? I know a lot, your earlier submission um, gave us a good sense of a balance between the human behavior and also engineering designs. Could you tell us in your concluding statements um, something about the both or even well, just the engineering part? Well, well, I just want to say that um, government is investing a lot, you know, into the development of drainage infrastructure. But the problem is, the, there's, the problem is so huge and so widespread that the impact is not being felt. And because resources are limited, government has adopted a strategy. You may not see a long drain in your area, but what government is doing is that with the limited resources, it's asked, tasked the hydrological services department to find out and target it's a targeted solution. Okay. What is causing the problem? Localized problem. Is it a constriction in the channel? Is, it an, is there an obstacle somewhere? So the department goes to rectify the problem so that there will be flow through the community. That is why you might not see, you might not see long stretches of drain being developed, okay. but government is doing a lot, investing a lot. But I want to state that the solution to the drainage problem in the country it's becoming a mirage for government. Okay. Government is overwhelmed. Yes. The problem is so widespread and so huge that you know the newly uh, new developing areas, they are creating even more problems, drainage problems than the old ones. Government is trying to deal with. Okay. When you have a situation where, where more problems are being created than you can solve, then you cannot have a lever on the problem. Mm -hmm. Government will find it difficult. Any government. The resources are limited. Difficult to solve this drainage problem if we don't, if our, if we don't change our attitude to uh, uh, drainage issues. If we live, continue to live the way we live in now, then there is never going to be a solution to the drainage problem because more problems are being created than solutions being found. And so that is what I want to state. And I want also to state that the notion that when drains are concrete line, then there will not be flooding. That notion is wrong. What is needed is, peop is for people to live away from the drainage corridors so that the drains will have, water will flow 
swiftly through the drains, whether they are off channel, natural channel, or whatever, once water can flow swiftly out of the communities into the outfall uh, uh, water bodies like the sea, then no home will be flooded. Then no problem will be caused. And so let us discuss this idea that uh, uh, concrete drains are solution to the problem. Yes. Elsewhere, the concrete drains are being removed because okay. they have become too small and there's Not a need to expand. And so they are removing them in Europe and creating earth channels, which can always be expanded when the need arises. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Kujoji. We are going to end on the mirage of problem solving by, by government with Mr. George Aisi. Who no, is no. proudly wearing his <laughs> <laughs> NADMO? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yes. uh, to be honest, I, I think I'm happy Hydrologica was here and Red Masters, you know, he's given us, I will take his number and give to other media <laughs> houses so that I wouldn't be there. The only one to speak of <laughs> That's good. And, and the issue of the social problems, uh, all of us should begin to recycle ourselves to know that when it, it happens, it's going to affect all of us. Yes. And so let's begin to think positively and stop uh, living within the buffers. It's, it's key. And, and you know, as you said, the siltation is the, one of the major problems. Major problems. That's why I have said that we should have continuous dredging. Yes. Dredge master. Because after some ask me, ah, you sit down to the rain setting before you say you're going to dredge. And I say, yes, it's a continuous thing. Because after the rains, because of our attitude, yes. these sand and coal will be washed in. Uh, and we yes. need to scoop them off. Mm -hmm. And that's where they, they've been doing that. And it's yeah. helped us down at the circle okay. area there. So we need to uh, work uh, on that. And again, I think governments should prioritize disaster management in the yes. country. Yes. Okay, FEMA in the United States is a key agency that resources are channeled to in parliament. I've had the privilege of meeting about three, four MPs lobbying them. We, we started lobbying them so we can prioritize their disaster management uh, in Ghana. And last one, Doc, uh, I think not more you can reach us uh, in case of any emergency yes. uh, 112 when you call it we'll get the extension uh, to not more or 0302 uh, 0302-964884. any emergency uh, our men will be there to respond to you thank you for the assurance of this and thank you gentlemen including mohammed um, on um, on zoom we are grateful for the discussions today. I would want to end on the note that we are all responsible, not only government, we are all responsible for the flood situation we have in Ghana. And we cannot continue annually to be overwhelmed by flooding. When it happens to someone else, you think that it's not close, but your activities, your actions may be contributing to it. I would want to end here. Hope to catch you soon on our next episode of Trash Talk.